of Teen Midsummer here, and we are here with Anna Marie McLemore, the author of The Weight of Feathers, When the Moon Was Ours, and her new book, Wild Beauty. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me yeah, and talking with me. Yes. I think we I freaked out when I was like, oh, I have to have her. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So first question, what drew you to writing magical realism? I think magical realism is really in my blood. Um, growing up Mexican American, being Latina, and I think um, being a queer Latina sort of has brought me deeper into that understanding of finding the wondrous and finding the beautiful in the midst of oppression. So even if I didn't really know the term magical realism growing up, mm -hmm. it was it was something that I knew from uh, from my family, from the stories I heard growing up. So when I heard the term and heard the definition, I thought, okay, this is. I think this is where I belong as a storyteller. Nice. Um, well, do you have a favorite author of magical realism other than yourself? I love Isabella Allende and Laura Espada, like both, um, mm -hmm. like Water for Chocolate, mm -hmm. uh, Portrait in Sepia, just mm -hmm. wonderful. I actually books. have Water for Chocolate at home, and I've not yeah. read it yet. Definitely read it. It's a fast read, and mm -hmm. there are recipes at the beginning of every chapter, which is part of what I love about it. I haven't mm -hmm. tried them all, but I really want to. Um, so it's it's a great book. It's it's also a sister book, which yeah. I love. Yeah, we'll definitely have to push that on my TBR. <laughs> Okay, and so for When the Moon Was Ours, we really love the story behind it, and we were wondering, um, especially with the dedication, did this story flower from your relationship with your husband? It definitely informed it. I didn't want to do anything close to a memoir. That's mm -hmm. part of what I love about magical realism, is it lets me sort of tell stories for my community without telling my story mm -hmm. or my husband's story. But this this is definitely a version of our love story, mm -hmm. a version of what we went through and what what it's like to fall in love as as teens and to find mm -hmm. your soulmate as a teen when you're both still figuring out who you are and what your history means to you and what your future is going to be. And also he was a big part of editing it, of making mm -hmm. sure that I was I was doing right by his community, mm -hmm. by our community, our, the LGBTQ community as a whole, but also specifically his identity. And I, I wanted to make sure that, that he was, one, okay with me writing about it, and two, that he was that he was in to make sure that he could he could stand by what was gonna be out there in the world. Yeah. I will tell you, I like cried um, in this in when the movie was ours. Oh my Because I just thought it was so it was just I was telling Olivia I found it to be one of the best ways that as a cis hetero person uh, for me to be able to understand as much as I can, mm -hmm. the experience that a trans boy goes through, and I just thought it was so well done, and I, I cried in that one part with mm -hmm. the, the pronouns section, which is like it was so. Oh, thank you. That's so well done. That means a lot to me because I wanted, I wanted to write a book where where the where this trans character was really at the center of the story, mm -hmm. so he wasn't he wasn't sidelined, he wasn't used as a narrative device or anything mm -hmm. like that. But I also wanted to give room to you know, a, a girl of color who loves him learning how to love him because that was that was part of what I had to do is that even if you even if you accept someone fully as who they are, you still have to leave so much room to fully know them. And it's it's a process that I'm I'm still I'm still going through with him, which is scary but also mm -hmm. wonderful. Thank you. So you work hard I already answered this. So the <laughs> what's the importance behind, you know, showcasing queer characters of color to you. I mean, it's so important anyway in the genre as it is anyway. Well, I'll start with the more general answer, which is I think we need more intersectional stories on shelves. We need queer characters of color. We need characters of color with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the sort of what we need more of on shelves answer. But the more personal answer to me is I, I really didn't see myself on shelves growing up. And I think that's part of why I came to being a reader so late. I had a lot of friends who were readers from very, from very young ages. I wasn't, and I think part of it was because I didn't really feel like I belonged in that sort of magical world of books, of stories, of bookshelves, mm -hmm. of libraries, because I didn't. I didn't see girls like me. Mm -hmm. I was. I didn't. I didn't see a lot of Latina girls, and I saw even fewer queer girls of color and queer Latina girls. So I think that's that's a big part of it is making sure that readers can find themselves on shelves. Now, of course, we don't want to just read books about ourselves because we mm -hmm. want to read right. widely, be able to be able to see the world. But if if you don't see yourself enough on bookshelves, you don't feel like they're that is a world you can enter. It doesn't feel like a world you've been granted entrance to. And I think that's part of the magic of, of stories is that they they make us feel like we can enter the world of books. Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so did you have a specific inspiration behind Wild Beauty or When the Moon is Ours or the 
in front of us or the just your experiences in general? Well, I'll start with When the Moon Was Ours because the, the interesting thing about that is that I was really trying to make that a straight book. And I, it kept being a horrible straight book, <laughs> draft after draft, because I had already, I already thought, okay, I'm, I'm writing about, about being a pro, I'm writing about being lucky that I can't, I can't do both. That's, mm -hmm. that's too much in one book. So I was trying to write a story about this girl who grows roses from her wrist, and it took me a long time to realize, like, this, this isn't just her story. Like, there's, there's a boy in her story that I, I need to give the space the space too because mm -hmm. because he belongs here and that was terrifying because of how personal it was going to be but eventually I realized okay I'm I'm coming up against the point where I either have to put a book out into the world that I don't really stand behind because it's not the book I really want to write or I have to just go for it mm -hmm. and be afraid but but still do it um, and one interesting thing that happened in writing When the Moon Was Ours is I discovered I really like writing things that I love and but making them scary. Like I love I love pumpkins. I love how they grow. I love the process of farming them. We have some we have some great pumpkin farms um, in Northern California that I that I got to sort of go observe and talk to some of the growers there. So they made Northern California. I didn't either until we moved there. I'm a Southern California girl. We do not have pumpkin farms. At least I'm sure I'm sure there are, but I grew up I grew up in LA. I think you'd have to go pretty far. Yeah, probably. So I thought sorry to interrupt. Where where are you guys from? North Carolina. So I live here in Austin now though. Okay. Yeah. But North Carolina. Okay. Are there pumpkin farms? Yes. Yes. You can go pick apples at the pumpkin farm. I love fall. I miss being in North Carolina for fall because it's obviously 80 degrees here. All the <laughs> I love Austin. Austin's a great city, but like it's so hot all the time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jen with you, um, who's one of my tour mates, was saying like, did everybody bring a sweater? Because this is this is Texas fall. <laughs> so I definitely, I definitely relate to that with, yeah. with California falls. Sorry, that was a set. That was oh no, it's totally fine. Right. Um, but. So I learned that with pumpkins, but I like taking something that I really love and making it terrifying. Miel is really scared <laughs> of pumpkins, and she has good yes. reason to be, but yes. until you know her reasons, it's a little bit of, okay, it's an odd thing to be scared of. Right. So in Wild Beauty, I've always loved gardens. I've always loved learning mm -hmm. about gardens, loved flowers, and I wanted to make gardens scary. So I wanted to write about, about murderous gardens that have this <laughs> dangerous magic in them, even though they were beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to write a queer Latina girl fairy tale. I mm -hmm. wanted to write an entire generation of these five cousins who were all bisexual mm -hmm. and are all all like know each other's identities, who who respect each other's identities, and even if they are at each other's throats about other things, mm -hmm. that is a common language. That's mm -hmm. something they very much understand. They understand each other's hearts. And I also really wanted to write a transgender and gender queer heartthrob. Mm -hmm. In um, When the Moon Was Ours, they're very much like Miel and Sam, they're the ones for each other. It's, mm -hmm. it's the two of them. But in Wild Beauty, all five of the No Male Venus girls are in love with the same transgender, gender queer girl. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, gender queer is definitely, I've had this question before, so that's part of why, right. why I'm saying it, because people have asked me, like, is, is Bay gender queer? And yeah, she, she definitely is, which you learn more of through the course mm -hmm. of the book. And that's not, that's not a spoiler, I, I never really yeah. consider Okay. spoilers. Yeah. Um, we don't so. have spoilers anyway. <laughs> I love spoilers. Me too, yeah. actually. I can go either way. Like sometimes I like them and sometimes I don't. I, I love spoilers. spoilers. I know that's the hard thing. You don't know if you if you if you like the spoiler. Until you like the spoiler. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. But the the great thing about being able to talk about identity is that I never consider identity a spoiler. So I can talk about mm -hmm. baby being mm -hmm. gender queer even if that's something that come that becomes clearer and clearer throughout the course of the book. So I wanted to do a gender queer heartthrob that all five of these girls were in love with because I've seen a lot of transgender gender queer characters get their hearts broken in no. stories and not not be the one who gets the girl or the boy mm -hmm. or unfortunately in many cases have have violence perpetrated mm -hmm. against them which which I want I definitely want to respect the fact that there are difficult stories that that need to be told but in this particular story I wanted I wanted pay to be the one they all wanted so that's yeah. a little bit of a, of a contrast from when the moon was ours that they that all five of these girls um, want they I'm excited. Um, so how does the kill your gaze trope um, affect your writing? A lot of how I handle LGBTQ identity comes from me and comes from my heart, but mm -hmm. I think it's hard not to push against those kinds of tropes. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what I was just talking about, mm -hmm. is that um, writing, writing Bay as a heartthrob was part of how I could sort of 
how I could sort of go against tropes like that. Yeah. So I think even though I want to be true to what to what I write, mm -hmm. we all want to be true to what we write. It's hard not to react to the stories we've been told because if we don't react yeah. against them, if we, if we don't fight them, then we just take them into ourselves. And that's I think that's part of what I've learned throughout writing the books that I've written is that I have to I have to push back against the stories I've been told because I I felt like I couldn't I couldn't have my identity as a Latina in the book. I felt like I couldn't write about mm -hmm. being queer and of color in a book. And those were all things I had been told. And unfortunately I think that trope and other other problematic tropes mm -hmm. are tropes that we take so deep into us that it's it's kind of like it's we have to go deep into ourselves to like to rip those out and to question those mm -hmm. and to replace them with with things that things that we want to make true and things that we that we know are true and that are and that should be the world. Unfortunately, we do live in a world that's pretty that's that's pretty antagonistic toward mm -hmm. a, toward a lot of identities and mm -hmm. LGBTQ identity. Definitely, I was just talking about this um, last night at Little Shop of Stories that part of what what's what's been hard in writing these characters is having having a transgender husband like I, mm -hmm. I was talking about I was talking about yesterday like I I love being married to him I'm proud of I'm proud of who he is I'm proud of what he does and how he lives in the world but there are there are a lot of places where like he will go into the men's room and we have we have like our procedure like okay I'm gonna I'm, I'm clocking it I'm coming after you mm -hmm. if you don't come out so to be able to write to write fairy tales with mm -hmm. with queer characters with transgender characters with characters of color that's a way I can sort of both both escape the world and react to directly what is happening in it. Sorry, yeah, Sorry that was a really long no, answer. No, it's a great it answer. Me a lot. So we were just in Adam Silvera's um, mm -hmm. panel, the You Plus Me Equals Fate, and he talked a lot about like trying to find the balance in writing a book about being gay and mm -hmm. Puerto Rican, like and then without people reacting saying like, no, that's too much. You choose one. Do both. Yeah, and I I got to do that a little bit in Wild Beauty because mm -hmm. these. One of the things that um, that you learn throughout these books is that these this family they're they're undocumented, mm -hmm. so they're they're undocumented. They're youngest generation are queer, and these are these are things I didn't think I could write about all in mm -hmm. one book. So right. I'm glad those conversations are, are yeah. happening, and that's yeah. it's it's really great to see those conversations happening because then we know that we're not we're not alone. We're not just thinking about mm -hmm. this all yeah. our heads. So. Well, I think we're gonna have to jump to our last question because we've got Caleb. So what? So I'm just gonna do this and I'll cut this part out. Mm -hmm. So, what's the best part of being a Fierce Reads author? I'd say like getting to getting to be myself, getting to be who I am, sort of in an out loud kind of way, and getting to be around around other authors who do that same thing, and but and getting to meet to meet readers, to meet booksellers, mm -hmm. librarians, teachers who are getting stories into the hands of readers who need them, who are making their their identities feel feel validated, who are giving them the stories that are going to make them feel invited into the world of books, mm -hmm. the world of stories. Well, thank you so thank much you. for being thank here. You so much it was so good to talk to you.